couldn't be left out, could I? What a night we've got for you. Thank you to Chris Broker. Who's ready for some wrestling? Yeah. And before we get some wrestling, we need a referee. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Daz! Welcome to Shooting Star, I'm PCW owner Stephen Fuller. Um, what you're watching is for free. Um, all the talent on the show work for free. All the fans who've paid to get in, all the money raised is going to help Chris Travis, who has been well documented, obviously having a battle with cancer. Um, the money raised uh, totals around £15,000, which you'll be all pleased to know. Um, so sit back, watch. And if you do enjoy what you're watching for free, just donate a couple of pounds to cancer research and do your bit as well. Thank you. With me at this time is El Ligero and he's written down his thoughts on Chris Travis and we've had them translated. Um, El Ligero says that he is here for one of his best mates that in all of life, let alone wrestling. He's known him for 14 years now and is his longest mate, his longest friend in all of wrestling. And they originally joked for probably about seven or so years that they just had no chemistry in the ring and then one day something happened and well you've seen the matches and he says that it's hard to sum up countless memories about Chris Travis everything from the night out where he put him in a sharpshooter in front of a nightclub to working a show where they were wrestling in front of well just 15 people but he's here for one man that's for Chris Travis I'm here in support of my good friend Trav who I think we had our first bonding experience here after a PCW show when both of us stayed out and got steaming and I think uh, the barmaids ended up giving, giving us shots just to get rid of us and ever since that day we've been bros for life so, here's you fighting a good fight and let's hope you kick cancer's ass. I love you bro. Me and my good friend, Kid Fight, we're here at Shooting Star, PCW for Chris Travis. Obviously I've known Chris for a long time so I just wanted to say like everyone else has, a little piece. And, you know, the amount of times that I've spent with Trav, nights out and stuff, but there's one story that always sticks in my mind. Trav, there was that one night, was that one night when you were a little bit too drunk and went back to your house and you were... Aye, yeah, well, you like, you like, the boy likes a drink. And I went back to your house and you started arguing with me a little bit because, you know, you, you were accusing the taxi driver of going the long way home and you charged an extra two pound. But we started arguing and you, you, you threw a, you threw a, you threw an, you threw an island ball down me. And now, you know, I guess I forgive you. And you're, you're one of our best friends. I just kind of get it. No, no. Kind of get it out of my head, mate. Cause you don't. I mean, it's a good thing. I don't mean. I mean, like, you know, you know what? You know what? You know, mate. Just, just tell him. He's made all this money tonight, right? He's made all this money in general. He's not even bought me a beer. Oh. Oh. They told me to get it off my chest. Hope you get better, Chris. Uh, and I know you will. Cut that, cut that last bit. Trav, we're here for you, and we hope you get better. You're the champion. Go I'll, me. I'll buy you a beer. Come uh, on. Good, uh, good. I'll get you a bit of bacon or something. Eh? <laughs> And I'll tell you what, I am honoured to be here tonight to, to be able to call these matches, sat next to you, in aid of Chris Travis. Good friend of both of us. There's Richard Parker wanders past there uh, from his ring announcing duties. Wearing a Travis shirt and there's no doubt about it. Look at all these people wearing their Travis t-shirts here this evening in Club Evoke, in Preston, in wonderful Lancashire, showing, showing support for one of PCW's very own Chris Travis, a man who had to take time away from the squared circle to battle stomach cancer, very, very serious illness. 
We are told that Chris Travis Snow is here this evening. He is going to be here later on. In the meantime, the wrestlers are here, the staff are here, everybody is here, pulling together promotions, wrestlers from all over the country, something you won't see on normal PCW shows, like the man who claims that he's WWE bound, Josh Bowden. Josh Bowden indeed. I don't know where, uh, where he's going to be WWE bound, but I, I, I presume it's because they need people to sweep the floors as well. But the, the great thing about tonight, something I think we do need to remember, is everybody is here for Chris Travis. Sometimes your perspective on who's a hero and who's a villain can be absolutely spot on, but tonight doesn't matter. Well, you say that, but Joey Hayes, who without a doubt is one of PCW's resident villains, he's the young man wearing the pink shorts which have I'm not Trav written on the back of them. How disrespectful. It's not disrespectful. You, it's for your benefit. You keep mixing the two of them up and have done on many occasions. They look nothing like each other. Maybe it was me then. Joey Hayes immediately showing that there's going to be no sportsmanship in this six-way multi-man traditional opener here at Preston City Wrestling as he sends El Ligero, the Mexican sensation, into the post. And we now have a chop fest between the tall Ashton Smith, the heaviest man in this match, and the cocky, well, he says he's 14 stone six of muscle steel and sex appeal, Josh Bowden, the Londoner. Great drop kick for Ashton Smith. This kid's got a lot of fire. Yeah. As they just, and we have of course seen Ashton Smith here before. He was here at the Who Dares Win oh. Battle Royal back in March 2014. We haven't seen him since, but here is an opportunity for him to actually get seen by the entire PCW fans. Here's the PCW regular, it's Dino! Dean Allmark. Great athleticism as always from the Stokey as he takes Josh Bowman down a peg or two. Oh, and he, there we see Noam Dahl, another regular that we're aware of. Going in there for that Carly Chop, but... Oh! The Scotsman delivers a picture-perfect dropkick of his own, and Noam Dahl, the former PCW Cruiserweight Champion, stands tall. And here is the former PCW Champion, Joey Hayes. As always, killing the atmosphere stone dead with his shenanigans. Well, actually, I think if you listen to this crowd, the atmosphere is in full flow, even though I don't happen to agree with what the fans are saying. Well, I do. El Ligero, the high-flying, lucha libre-style Mexican. 13 years living on these shores now, 30 years old, El Ligero still young, still full of high-flying daredevil risk-taking. Huge kick to the face, sends Dart Oh! How about that dive from Dean Olmer? And it is traditional here at PCW that we do dive out under the floor quite often. It's the risk you take in those front row seats. Anything can happen in these opening six-way matches. All six men. Already showing their credentials. There's Josh Bowden with a massive reverse knife edge chop on Joey Hayes, oh. and the young Londoner is full of confidence. This guy, let me tell you something, backstage he tells anyone who will listen how good he is. And he's proving it right now as he's taking the fight to all his opponents. Come on, people, make some noise. Well, that's it, I have seen Josh Borden before with a very different attitude, but you cannot doubt the young guy's pluck and skill, and look at that! Well, he says how great he is, and let me tell you something, that was a great moonsault. Beautiful moonsault from, from the, one of the benches here in, in a Vogue nightclub here in Preston. Absolutely, we're going out on YouTube here. Across the world, people will be able to pledge money to what we call Travaid. We, we, we call it with affection for Chris Travis. Oh! Trying to raise money for a young man who has been unable to wrestle, has been unable to work, and already well over £10,000 has been raised 
over £5,000 on the Travade Indiegogo website and also through t-shirt sales, merchandise sales, other wrestling companies holding charity shows throughout the UK. Everybody has come together. That is the esteem that Chris Travis is held in in the British wrestling scene. And rightly so as well. Back here though, we've got a six man match here. We have seen Chris Travis perform ever so well in so many of these sorts of matches. Indeed. Sometimes against some of the guys in there. We just saw Joey Hayes deliver an excellent DDT. But Noam Dar isn't ready to give it up just yet. Hayes is spending too much time arguing with referee Des Robinson. And Noam Dar is being given the opportunity to recover right now. Joey Hayes making a cardinal sin, cardinal mistake. And there goes Noam Dar with a huge body slam on Hayes. And on Allmark, here comes the cocky Bodum. And he's straight down on his back. And here comes Norman Leguero, possibly a little bit of truce here, it's every man for himself in these six-man matches. But the Mexican and the Scots look like they're plotting something here, no they're not. Oh, oh, oh. No, I'm da sucking him in, Stallion. And no, that was going to be another one. Ashton Smith fight, but he's just a little bit too fast, but no, no he's not. And he gets body slammed too. The brummy Ashton Smith, Joey A still staggering around. Rubber legged. Noam Dar again going for the body slam this time. Joey Hayes wisely grabbing the top rope, blocking the move, putting his hands on the referee though. Joey Hayes is living dangerously in this match. He could be disqualified. Or maybe body slam by the ref. Only here at PCW. As referee Tez get involved in this multi man action here. Strike after huge strike, and the girl is going for the C4L, that's been a long spring for DDT, which has won so many matches with. Noam Dar catches him in the champagne super knee bar, he's got him in the centre of the ring. The masked man, nowhere to go. Oh, here comes the WWE bound. But he's been locked. Oh. Maybe he's got a ticket for WrestleMania. So oh, and now Joey's locked on, the cross face. What can Dean Olmark do? He's going to break this up. Oh no, Joey's got the cross face on Dino and Leguero at the same time. Who's going to tap? What's Des Robinson going to do? And meanwhile, Bodum is still in the champagne super diva. Ashton Smith picking the bones. Beautiful go to sleep by Ashton Smith. But hang on a second. Does that mean Joey Hayes is going to capitalise in a bubblegum style? We see who is in the rascal bubblegum win many three-way matches by that very same method. But why wouldn't you do that though? It makes perfect sense. Dude, if you're in there, let the other guys do the work. And if somebody else has hit a big move on them, capitalise. Indeed, that might be what the Mexican sensation is going to do right now. El Ligero, have a look. Jawbreaker combination goes for the C4L. He's got all yeah. the marks set up and he plants him. But he can't capitalise on that though. And Dean Allmark rolls out of the ring. Oh, look at Bodum, he's positively salivating here. What an arrogant a hole. And now what's he doing? Oh, how about that? Modified pile driver. Joey Hayes throws Bodum out. Is he going to steal the win? No, he's not. Figuero kicks out. But he's got on that cross face again. Indeed, he has. We've seen him do that many times. And Ligero taps and Hayes wins. The winner of the match, Joey Hayes. Well, first time I remember seeing Chris Travis wrestle uh, was a show in Lee British Legion in 2003, and he came out to the Backstreet Boys as long as you love me. <laughs> uh, he, was, he was a young man, yeah, yeah, seriously. And he had this match on Ligero and Spud was in it, and it, it just wasn't very good. He just said, I think he'd, I think he'd, I think he'd admit that. I think he would admit that, Chris, because, you know, ten years on, watching him in PCW, the transformation has been uh, incredible. He is such a, a great performer, such an innate sense of drama to his matches. 
and it's been an absolute pleasure to sit at ringside and announce him against Prince Devitt and yeah. Chris Masters. Absolutely, the three th- three matches against Chris Masters, yeah. three matches against Kevin Steen. Yeah. Absolutely, yes, yes. Um, it's uh, the, the two money in the bank matches that he's saying he's won. He, he won them PCW. both. History to do that. Yeah. You know what I really like about Trav, and I've spoken with a lot of people with regards to this. Um, just the fact that he's there for everybody, and everybody's got a lovely story of like how uh, he's always been there, and, and he's in in you know in the condition he is at the moment. But it, it doesn't stop him. It, the, there's guys who've had operations, and he's been there for them. When Lionheart broke his neck, yeah. it was uh, it was him who went to the hospital. I'm sure Lionheart was, Travis, was upset. Was really you know, upset. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's, the, it's the heart of the guy, not just the heart in the ring uh, of the fighter, but the heart of the human being. Yeah, he puts a smile on everybody's face. Absolutely. Hey! Hey, 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 hey! That's why I'm the best in PCW! You all know it, especially you, fat boy! You what? Charming as ever, Joey Hayes. What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? You got He's really quiet, haven't you? His mum should have given him a slap when he was younger. Mom makes those noises. Joey is a white girl. Oh. Joey is a white girl. I've heard that before. I've heard it all before. Don't worry about it. It's hardly an insult. Joey is the guys that just won that match. Thank you. Anyway, as I was going to say before you are chirping, stop chirping in, alright? This show is over, run it. Oh, no, 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 six years that I've known Chris Travis, he's been nothing but a lot more professional. Whether he's having bad days, good days, he's always the same. Always shows great appreciation to everyone around him. Um, get well soon, Trav. Walk again, let alone wrestle again, and Joey Hayes is beating him down already. Already going after the back of the neck, Stallion. What a cheap shot, artist. A cheap shot, but why is Lionheart even out there? Joey Hayes has just had a, a gruelling match against five other men. Hey, it was Joey Hayes that mentioned Lionheart's name in vain. Yuri Naji! Down goes Joey Hayes, and is this a preview? Is this what we can expect? A road to glory when Lionheart makes his big return. Joey Hayes is retreating. Joey Hayes is heading for the hills. I'm back. Yeah, I'm here today to uh, help support Chris Travers. Um, obviously, he's ill. I'll no, start again, fuck that. Um, yeah, today I'm here to, in support of uh, Chris Travis, as long as the, the British wrestling community. And uh, I like Trav for the simple reason that he's, he's always going to take the piss out of Oligero. And I'm sure if Matt Romantum was here, we'd say the same thing. Are you ready for a singles match? Yeah. And without any further ado, the following contest is indeed a singles match set for one fall. One fall! Please welcome to the ring first. 
Who would you like to hear from first, Trav? Mel or myself? Probably Mel, so I'm going to go first. Hi, Trav. <laughs> Just come here in person to turn you down face to face because I'm sick of the tweets. You call me my Mel. I'm not your Ma Mel. You wish I was your Mel. You've harassed me at shows, Twitter, Facebook, even at, in McDonald's, trying to buy me a Happy Meal. And no means no, okay? I'm here today. I'm happy to raise money for charity, but just want to get this out there. We're never going to be together, okay? Now, Sticks, yeah. what would you like to say? And Trav, we're never going to be together either, so get it through your head, okay? Seriously, oh man. I'm only joking, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <I'm> joking. <laughs> Um, I remember meeting you in 2002 in Sheffield when myself and Ross came up to do our first Northern show. We've known you ever since, which is pretty much my entire wrestling career. You know, both of us have changed, you know, a lot for the better. But I remember, you know, maybe, you know, you've done a few, you've done a, quite a few main events since then. But if you remember, I was the one who saw something in you first. All right, you remember you and Bubblegum at Knox County, street fight main event. You're still skinny wearing your blue plevers and all that. But I didn't care because I knew both of you would be the future of British wrestling. And now you're the current of British wrestling. And you know, you probably still will be the future because I know you're gonna get over this cancer stuff and you're gonna come back stronger than ever. And I'll be waiting for you with a massive hug when you are. <laughs> okay, um, Trav. I just want to say uh, thank you for having me and being a part of this show today. Like I speak for everybody backstage, we love you and we know you're on the mend and we all can't wait till you're back in the ring for a PCW and all the other promotions. From a personal standpoint, um, nearly a year and a half ago when I was going through a personal trouble on my own, you were supportive, you were a great friend and over the years as I've gotten to know you more and more in a business where you can count the amount of friends you've got on maybe one hand, I'd definitely consider you one. Love you man, get back, better safe. And I uh, can't wait to see you back in the ring, my friend. Take care. <laughs> to raise money for Chris Travis, this show, a lot of wrestlers appearing here tonight for the very first time. Yes, absolutely. A lot of people who don't normally appear in PCW, friends of Chris Travis or people who have worked with Chris Travis all over the country for a long period of time and, and Sticks and way, Joseph Connors, two of those men. Nope. You lay your hands on me, I will kill you. We haven't seen either of these gentlemen here before, nor have we seen the it girl, Melanie Bryce, with this particular gentleman. The Victoria Beckham of British wrestling. There she is. She hardly is. Victoria Beckham stuck with one guy. I've seen her on so many blokes' arms. She's like a tribal tattoo. Wearing those Gucci shoes, no doubt with that expensive handbag to match. The It Girl always likes to think she looks immaculate. Well, you can't follow me, she does look immaculate. And normally, having Melanie Price in your corner is a sure third fireway to success. And you've got to laugh at the PCW fans. Sticks wrestles all over the country. And you can bet that's the first time he's ever been called uh, um, He is a shit mister. What he just got called. I had to write it down because obviously I don't swear. I'm a man of decorum. For future reference. Well, Sticks, the heavyweight house of pain, is a guy that I do know a lot about. Oh, you and me both, mate. And this is a bit of master versus pupil wrestling right here because Styx trained young Joseph Connors. Yes, I this do believe that's the case. This is teacher versus student Styx, yeah. who runs the heavy the um, the House of Pain wrestling school in Nottingham, hence the nickname Heavyweight House of Pain. Joseph Connors graduated from that school. This is why I'm led to believe. And now a lot of people are starting to sit up and take notice of Joseph Connors saying he's one of the best up-and-coming wrestlers in the UK. I think Styx is jealous. I can hardly imagine a man of Styx's calibre, a guy who has won championships across the country, would be jealous of the likes of special delivery Joseph Connors. Well, how come he's allowing the PCW fans to annoy him? If he's that much of a veteran, that experienced, that accomplished, 
because he showed some more points. You've got to bear in mind the fans here at PCW are He's extremely warm. He's going to get big quick. Warm. Oh, look at that. Oh, he nearly, he nearly froze. Sticks nearly froze in the ra rarefied air of Preston City Wrestling. Yeah, he might be a shit Mr. T, but he always comes back with the gold. This man has incredible winning streaks wherever he goes. Great arm drags though from Joe Connors. Look at the shape Joe Connors is in. I remember Joe Connors about four or five years ago when he first broke in. He was, he weighed a lot more, mainly around the midriff. He was squat, he was, he was much more of a sort of a spark plug style brawler and he's got himself in incredible shape with the right diet, with the right training regimen. He's now looking lean, he's quicker, better condition all around. That's right. Uh, of course, he's known very much for singles wrestling now, but he is an accomplished tag team wrestler. Indeed. He's once known, of course, as the other one out of the Predators. With Paul Malin, absolutely. The other guy sticks out very well because they all came Actually, out of that training school in Nottingham. I've done a fair bit of research, as you know, before folks come here to PCW, and I accidentally found some stuff out about Joseph Connors in a doctor's waiting room. I was reading Take a Break magazine and he magically appeared in one of the articles in there. Oh, really? Yep, I would search it out yourself online. Um, let's just say Mr. Purple Pants has a very interesting uh, backstory, shall we say. Okay. Are you going to share that with the viewers? <laughs> eh? Are you going to share that with the viewers? I, I, I think it's up to everyone to find that out themselves. It's very interesting though. He's definitely a ladies man. Take a break. He doesn't appear on the Sudoku page then. I'm surprised you can even spell Sudoku. But he's in control and certainly over the the much more experienced and I would say stronger sticks. We're talking about training schools though, coming soon to Preston though, the Preston City Wrestling Academy. That's going to be amazing, that's going to give people a chance to be trained by international wrestling stars and some of the UK wrestling's best right here in Preston. Absolutely, I believe uh, one of your favourites, Bubblegum, is, uh, is going to be one of the trainers there. Indeed, and make sure you stay tuned to PrestonCityWrestling.com for all the latest news on the Preston City Wrestling Academy. Or you can follow PCW on Twitter at PCW underscore UK for all the updates. Great hip toss there from the heavyweight house of pain. Kick out by Joe Connors. Takes him down with the arm drag again. Got to be impressed with the evolution of Joe Connors. So much better technically. One of the most improved, I would say, on the UK scene. A lot of people would agree with that. You hear a lot of good things about Joe Connors. It sounds too much like Joe Kinnear for my liking, though, and that's, that's troubling for a Newcastle fan. He's coming up! Here we go. Heavyweight House of Pain. He outweighs Joe Connors by a good stone and a half, maybe more. Look at this, he's got the massive stick, so this is impressive. Well, this is a master of leverage now, Joseph Connors. That was absolutely brilliant. Beautiful delayed suplex, hooks the leg. Melanie Price looks concerned. She does, I wonder what she's making of this. The point of having someone in your corner is there as a tactician to see if the battle's going your way or if it's not, how you can alter and change your tactics, what your strategy is. I'm wondering what she's reading so far from this match, apart from the fact that Styx is just getting his arse handed to him by, by Connors. Well, she's probably worried because Styx probably promised to buy her a Pandora bracelet if he, if he wins tonight. She can see her next month's supply of jewellery disappearing down the drain. Oh, and Styx using Melanie Price as a shield to gain the advantage, but Connors too smart, too slick. Catching sticks, I think, in the in the eye, possibly there. Oh. And a huge cross body into the into the corner. Well, that, that's the reason Melanie Price is there. Well, I pity the fool that takes on the heavyweight house of pain. That was a hella cross body. And I thought he was scared. Oh. Oh. Meaty forearm into the ribcage from Sticks. 
named after the river. Is that right? The river sticks? Well, I would oh. imagine so, yes, out of Greek mythology. Is that the one that you have to cross to get to the gates of hell? That's right, yes. Is that right? It is, yeah. Well, Hades, not hell, but yeah. Where Cerberus, the three headed dog, not Melanie Price, stands guard. Speaking of the gates of hell, Ryan Thomas from Coronation Street is on at Yates's today. I have no idea what that means. So we go, I guess that Fisher Gate is the River Styx. Got to cross that to get to the gates of hell anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, Yates you're a, watching Yates is on Preston, a Friday night. City Wrestling. Mr. Yates is on a Friday night, Joe. I'm sorry. Indeed you are, and we're back here live with Styx versus Joseph Connors. At the Shooting Star Chris Travis charity show, all the wrestlers giving of their time freely this evening. Yep. Hashtag Shooting Star if you're following on Twitter. At Real Chris Travis as well if you want to follow Trav and follow his fight back to full recuperation. Because that's what we certainly we certainly hope it's going to be, and you know the, the prognosis is good. You know we're, we're certainly. All, Hoping and praying that Chris can fight his way back to the point that he achieves what I know he wants to achieve, and that is to return to in-ring action someday here in Preston. And we all want to see that. Chris Travis, without a doubt, is the franchise, if you like, of PCW. Yeah, we've said it many times, the great matches he had with Prince Devitt, with Mark Andrews with T-Bone over the PCW title. Remember that hellacious bull rope match he had with T-Bone? Yep, absolutely. And then, of course, the three-bout series with the masterpiece Chris Masters. He's had some cracking bouts against Lionheart, our former general manager. In the early days of PCW. Yep, very And, of course, so. the man who's now known as Kevin Owens. Yeah. Too, that's Kevin Steen. Some intense wars, all in the Preston City wrestling ring. I would say that possibly the greatest collection in terms of the quality of matches of any PCW wrestler Chris Travis has had. I would have to agree with that. He has a, a very wide range of uh, different matches and different opponents. Melanie Price giving her man encouragement. Meanwhile, Sticks slowed the pace down in control of Joseph Connors. I like Melanie Price's style at ringside. She looks as though she's just there as eye candy, something to look pretty. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she'll do something that'll, with a click of the fingers, that'll turn the tide. And of course, she did a distraction as well. Distraction for Joe Connors, but he seems to have remained rather marvelously focused thus far. I'm sure he's seen women before. He certainly has. And he's, um, he's showing all the versatility of a, a guy who can stand toe to toe with trade fists. He can wrestle. He can fly. And he's even at times overpowered the heavyweight house of pain. Well, that's it. But you know what? You said earlier that uh, Sticks trained Joe Connors. When you're imparting your knowledge on someone, you're going to put a lot of your own personality into that, so he is going to be very aware of every single move that Styx does. And also, you know, as the student, there's an element of Joe Connors wanting to impress Styx, wanting to show you, look here, mate, you may have taught me, but I've now surpassed you. Which is just rude. Never happened to me at school. I mean, I taught you everything you know about commentary. Imagine if you suddenly started saying you were better than me. <laughs> nice counter by Joe Connors. And how about that? Oh, he managed to sunset flip Sticks when Sticks wasn't even standing up. And at that angle, that's got to take a fair bit of power from Joseph Connors. Beautiful. Rolling cradle with a bridge. Sticks counters. Great wrestling by the two men from Nottingham. Connors now off the rope, sticks so catches it. Beautiful sit out power bomb. Hooks both the legs. Connors still kicks out. These two men are impressing on their Preston debut this evening. And Melanie Price fanning herself there. Very relieved that her guys managed to hold in on this. Crowder into it as well here in Preston. 
They don't always get impressed with newcomers that easily. They're certainly impressed with Connors. Look at the strength of this young man. 14 stone 11 to Sticks is 16 stone 1. And he's overpowered him at times. And they still the clotheslines. Second one knocks yeah. them both down. First one, they thought, let's get through that wind and get the advantage, but they both thought the same thing. And I think that's probably something that Connors has picked up from Sticks, but it's ended up with them both down for the count, with referee Des Robinson counting over the guys here. This comes down to who's in the better shape. The match has now lasted 10 minutes. It's all about all those hours in the gym, pounding the road. Pounding the road? Road work, jogging, running. All oh, right. Not That's for you. I don't do manual work. Walk in the park. Yeah. Connors with a beautiful leaping DDT. And look at oh, look at the it girl. And this is the the true value of Melanie Price. Why she's there. Well, yep, the price is right. But oh, and look at that no, man no, no. handling a woman. That's hardly gentlemanly conduct. People of Preston don't want to see that. Sticks capitalises, rolling cradle. Oh, the collision! Over <laughs> straight into a stick slam. One, two, and still he can't beat Connors. Almost sent them spiralling into a black hole with that. And the fans here chanting for Connors. But it's Styx who's up to his feet first. The heavyweight house of pain. A quick double check on, on Melanie Price, but he realizes the first thing is victory. Where's the twit girl and the it girl? Realizes without that price, right, without the winner's purse, he wouldn't be able to pay for her services tonight. Although, of course, the rest of us would probably give that money to Chris Travis. Nice sunset flip from Connors, and he beats him! The winner of the match, Joseph Connor! Watching Chris uh, develop as a wrestler for the time, he, he, since I started coming to British wrestling shows, I remember seeing him on PW, and I've, I've seen him around the country since then, and he just, he's one of those guys who has kind of bridged the gap between Britain and America and the imports, and kind of worked with a lot of people and proven how good the shows over here can be. He's the guy that the, the imports go away and say that the, the shows in, in Britain, in Preston, in PCW and in other promotions, these are the, these are the places you need to wrestle. Um, and it's really helped, because I think with cross-pollination, uh, got to mix things up a bit. And I think he's a great ambassador for that. Because the guys who work with him over there, want to work with him again. The guys who work with him over here, they want to keep working with him. So, uh, looking forward to seeing more of that. Right, uh, many memories of Trav uh, going back. I've known Trav since he first came into the business uh, quite a few years, you know, like, you know, uh, as thin as a rig, he didn't have the muscles he's got now. <laughs> but he first came to um, one of the training schools that I was running in Nottingham and that, and uh, he couldn't wish to meet a nicer lad, and uh, it's tremendous what he's done in the business. And we're all here tonight to help him raise some money, and um, God bless you, Trav. I hope you get well soon, mate. I love you. What do you think of Joseph Connors? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're the referee for this next contest, Mr. Joel Allen. We've had a six-way match. We've had a singles match. The following contest is a tag team match set for one fall. I've known Trav since I started really, so I was 15, coming up to 27, so nearly 12 years. Like, he's one of them I've known him since I started, but he was a friend, but not one of them I used to talk to a lot. But uh, then, like, when I was one of the first, like, not thankfully, but like, I was privileged to be one of the first to find out when he got the news, or well, the bad news, but like, and he, I feel like, even though I've always been friends with him, we were never dead close, but then when I heard about the news of him, it kind of struck a chord in me because like my uncle died of throat cancer, my auntie died of bowel cancer, 
It's like, even though we weren't that close, when he told me, he was like, kind of not me for six, and I messaged him, like, privately, he told him, like, you know, I've been through it with family members before, whenever with someone I've considered a friend. And that's how I was just privileged to find out, and be one of the first to find out about it, because I, I didn't feel I had any right. Like, mates like Joey and Danny, etc., probably did have a right, but I never felt like I did, so it meant a lot to me. And, yeah. Like I said from the start, though, spoilers, Trav wins, and uh, keep giving me the Trav tips on Twitter. In a bit. Uh, the reason for me that uh, I love Chris Travis and the reason I'm here today is um, Trav was one of the f very first people in England to uh, recognise the bit of hard work I've been putting in up in Scotland. We had a few matches and um, really started putting me over, really, really giving me some good critique to help better myself and uh, get myself out there on the scene. He's always been nice to me, he's always been great, he's a fantastic worker and I wish him all the, all the best and hope he gets better soon. Well, absolutely, because, you know, Doug Williams, Andy Wilde, CJ Banks certainly are all better known as singles wrestlers. Kid Fight, we normally see tagging up with Liam Thompson in the team of Fight Club. Tonight he's with Banks and Doug and Andy Wilde are teaming up together. That's certainly the first time they have, to my knowledge. Yeah, that, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I was wondering about that tag team. I, I don't even know of any sort of well-known friendship between the two of them, but... Let's see how they do as a team this evening. Well, for young Andy Wilde from Fife, Scotland, you know, to be tagging up with the ambassador, Doug Williams, that's a, a feather in his cap at any time. Absolutely. For the statesman of, uh, of British wrestling there with Doug Williams, as the team of CJ Banks and Kid Fight decide on who will enter the ring first out of their team. Hey, get him back! Not since CJ Banks and Preston for some time. Juice Club for this evening. You know, I was thinking that, but I actually thought it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, as the fans sing happy birthday. It is Joel's birthday. Happy birthday to Joel. It was my birthday yesterday. Yeah, shut up. We'll stop celebrating them once he hit 65. Why is nobody chanting happy birthday to me? Where'd you go, Juice? Come on. It was mine yesterday. I know, even your family forgot. Your wife pretended to be ill so she could go out. I'm an assault now. You call him that stallion. Well, it looks as though it's Doug Williams. Hey, I'm calling the match. I'm calling the match. Stop. That's my job. Doug Williams in the ring. One of the greatest technical wrestlers in British wrestling ever, and certainly one of the top UK stars of the past 20 years. Doug Williams, the former PCW champion. Yes, he is. He's had some tremendous matches here in PCW. Who can forget that Iron Man match against oh, El Nigero? Still to this day, one of my favourite matches. Well, without a doubt, the best hour long match I've ever seen. Yeah. No doubt about it. And Doug, you know, Doug's not been seen in Preston since uh, Festive Fury 2013. And, and who did he beat on that occasion? Well, he holds a win over the current PCW champion, oh, Uha Nation. Uha Nation. Yes. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. This guy's like a wine. He just gets better with age. And what's interesting no. about it is Doug's teamed yeah, up with uh, exactly. once before here, and he won that. So therefore, yeah. he's got the same record here at PCW. Uh, yeah. Some stats for you there. Doug Williams versus CJ. But let me tell you something, CJ Banks calls himself the pound for pound best. And it's not just a catchy moniker because the juice. So let me tell you something, he can exchange holds with the best of them and that's exactly what he's doing right now. He's in there with the ambassador, Doug Williams. Absolutely. Andy Wilde, no stranger of course to PCW. I haven't seen him maybe as, as much as we have some of the other regulars, but uh, he has. Had four appearances here at PCW. He debuted, of course, at uh, PCW versus PBW all the way back in 2011. And he lost to T Bone in a title match. He did once, yeah, he did actually have a PCW title shot, you're right. Yeah. Come on. CJ Banks keeping Doug Williams grounded with a nice side headlock. Doug, though, showing that veteran skill. So would you give the advantage here to Doug because of his experience? Or perhaps across to the Juice Club there, the fact that we've got Kid Fight 
who is of course a tag team veteran and former tag team champion, the first tag team champion here in PCW. Well, has Doug ever actually lost a fair fight in a PCW ring? I'm not counting that time when Lionheart ambushed him after that one hour Iron Man match and stole the PCW title. Yeah. Oh, depends on what you yeah. class as That's the rules. Come on, William! Yeah. Yeah. Stipulation that uh, Stephen Flubber had put it in there that Lionheart could have his title shot, so... Well, the point, I'm making, is, the point oh. I'm making is I would never back against Doug. The guy's wrestled all over the world. He's wrestled in Japan. He's wrestled in America. He's wrestled in Germany. You know, from you know, the, the, being part of the Hammerlock training school in Kent in the mid 90s, through his time with the FWA, through his time with TNA, part of the British Invasion, wrestling in pro wrestling, Noah being the champion of the tag team champions alongside Scorpio, all the way through to his PCW title reign. This is the most decorated and one of the most respected individuals in British wrestling as a side of the past 20 years. You can't yeah. back against him. No. You just can't. That's right, and I've said many a time about Doug. Part of what makes him hey, so get good him is his adaptability. The fact that he can switch it up from being technical. He can start rolling with you. He'll throw moves out left, right and centre. But he will match whatever you change your tactics to. He will alter and he will beat you at them. As he's proved time and time again. It's like when Stephen Gerrard's name is on the Liverpool team sheet. Yes, Stephen Gerrard is coming towards the twilight years of his career. But you still wouldn't back against him because of the ability that he has. But Doug Williams, yep, okay, he's been around a while now. He's still a young man, though, he's still a young man. He's younger than me, that means he's a young man. On the open, Juice, come on, on the open. There's a lot of people who are younger. I think Nicholas Parsons is younger than you. Hey, watch yourself. Yeah, but only by 10 months in Doug's case. Nice. We're about the same age as the point we're making, so he's young. Nice European uppercut there from Kid Fight. Always comes to, well, as you'd expect from a name, he comes to fight. Andy Wilde? This isn't really wild though, that kind of wrecked that theory. He's just a good technical wrestler. Yeah, but Andy Mellow doesn't think he's good. He's very mellow though, he's such an easygoing guy, he's a lovely guy. Andy on, Mello, do you ever yeah. suggest that to him? The wild thing isn't working out. You're not, you're not nuts, you're not crazy. Mind you, he's going toe to toe there with Kid Fight. Let's go, big man, let's go again. Do his fight, off! Power of the bounty. Oh, and he's just bit his thumb at him. What a, what a very 15th century insult. From the main streets of Glasgow, Kid Fight. Narrow it down which mean streets. There's lots of them. Have you been on Sophie Hall Street on a Saturday night? Uh, oh. Yes, I uh have. -huh. Goodness me. Dodge the flying beer bottles. I had to go and get more beer for me. The two Scotsmen in here. It's bragging rights between Kid Fight and Andy Wilde. Oh! Some prime Scottish beef behind that shoulder block. Not kick fight clean out of the ring. And he's having to regroup now with the juice. I just think at the moment, you know, kick fight and CJ backs. The one thing I've always thought about CJ, his one weakness is he's a bit of a hothead. And kick fight being from Glasgow. Yes, he sometimes lets his emotions run away with him as well. Doug Williams, though, is calmness personified. He's always been in full control in that squared circle. And Andy Wilde, or Andy Mello, as we've rechristened him, is of a similar ilk personality-wise. So I would always think they've got a better chance. That it's the a, calm versus the storm, it's Stallion. A, if it's going to go the distance and go for a long time, you know, and they, they case the match out, then absolutely, I would agree with you. But Whoa! if this is going to go on the, the fact of just an instant win. Oh, but well it looks so that it looks so kid fighting. And CJ Banks had enough, but Doug and Andy haven't. Absolutely, it looked like uh, they were spending a bit too long outside the ring regrouping for Williams and Wilde's liking. And now the fight has broken down here at Club Evoke in wonderful Lancashire. Doug Williams. 
taking it to CJ Banks. There's no wrestling here. Just a fight going on. Williams and Wild know exactly what they're going to do. Oh, oh. It's a loving. And like most romantic relationships, oh, it's going to end painfully. Banks and Fighter 2, Wiley for that. That's right. It looks advantage. as though that was all a scheme. Like you're talking about the calmness of Williams and Andy Wales. Well, they conned them into thinking they were just going to walk to the back. And what happens? It was all a ploy just to rattle them. Of course, sometimes you could be too calm in the ring. It's always, you know, sometimes it's better to get the adrenaline flowing. Hey, come on! Oh, hey, yourself, boy. One more time, we're in the balance. There he is, the birthday boy, referee Joel Allen. Sake. Down stacks yeah. and just CJ Banks. What Joel Allen got for this one? Fight actually. I was going to say, I wonder what Joel Allen got for his birthday. So it wasn't hair straighteners. Oh. Yeah. 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 Well, here we are on YouTube. If you like what you see, then make sure to. Check out PCW video on demand at Vimeo, Vimeo, Vimeo.com. Vimeo, not video, Vimeo. It's got Vim. Vimeo.com, it should be searched for Preston City Wrestling. That's exactly what we should do. I thought we should. That's right. You were in the briefing with Mr. Flutter beforehand as well, weren't you? It's almost like I pay attention. It's almost like you do. Oh, oh, oh. Back in the ring, we've got Andy Wilde, who did have the advantage of a kid fight, but kid fight again, I've got to just go with that tag team experience. He's very measured, his kid fight, everything that he does. He's, yeah, absolutely. And you know why I would also give the advantage to, to Juice Club? Simply because you've got kid fight in there. Kid fight has even defended his titles here at PCW without his partner before. He had Bob Dar substitute. Juice Club, it sounds like some yeah. den of late night iniquity on the beach See, at Ibiza. I, I wasn't thinking of that, I was thinking it was maybe like, you know, where fat birds go to the gym. Oh. You're despicable. Oh, Andy Wilde, Andy Wilde, somewhere. Andy Wilde certainly got a bit of beef behind him. And he's gonna throw every, every single inch of it into that belly to belly overhead. Belly, belly to, to belly, I guess. CJ Banks, I think he's down outside the ring, the pound for pound best. Meanwhile, Kid Fight struggling to his feet as well. Doug Williams imploring Andy Wilde to make the tag. Can he do it? They both tag in, and it's Williams versus Banks. Big clothesline by Doug, and another one. Crowd getting behind him. So much respect here for Doug Williams. Sets him up possibly for an exploder suplex. Yeah, though. we've seen that before. CJ counters, yeah. Yeah, totally scouted. Big knee lift from Doug. Massive lariat. Shoots the half. Hooks the leg. I'm surprised oh, I don't, I don't he still has his head on after that. I don't think he did hook the leg. That may have been the problem there. He couldn't hold CJ down for the two count. Doug Williams moving in behind now. He's got the hands hooked. And CJ Banks. He's going to be singing soprano after that one. Exactly. And, and what happens? Doug Williams cons Joel Allen into saying, oh, I kicked him on the thigh. Who kicks somebody in the thigh? You hoof them in the bollocks. Oh, but look at this. They've caught Doug Williams. Flying elbow from CJ. Russian leg sweep from Kid Fight. Beautiful double team move. And Andy Wilde had to save the ambassador, Doug Williams, at the last split second. Wild using the extra extra power to muscle Kid Fight out of the ring. This is a great opportunity now for the fan favourites, Williams and Wild. 
which does actually roll off the top. Big knee from Douglas. Massive backbreaker from Andy Wilde. Here comes the bomb scare. Could this be it? No kid fight breaks it up. No, kid fight, he's just knows his tag team wrestling backwards. Always in the right position to make the save on his partner. I wonder where Liam Thompson is this evening, his regular partner in Fight Club. They are scheduled to be back here on a Road to Glory weekend. Can't wait for that coming up in mid-March. Massive drop kick by the Glaswegian. Waiting for his Scottish counterpart, but Andy Wilde shoves him in. Huge boot right across the face. Takes a lot to knock the tough man from the streets of Glasgow out, but I think that's exactly what he's done now, what CJ Banks doing. Setting Doug up, going for that running knee. That's a painted CJ Banks finishing move. And throws that for Doug Williams. Chaos Theory. Chris Travis is one of those guys that, when I first thought, saw him um, a long, long time ago, we go back to 1PW days, um, to me, he was a real prospect um, and someone that I knew would be, if not just big on the UK scene, then making some roads on a global scene. Um, you know, <clears throat> he had it all, he had a good body, he was tall, he could work. Um, I can't say he talked very much because in the British wrestling environment, you don't have that much opportunity to see guys' promos, but I'm sure that he would have knocked it out of the park um, if I'd seen him do any of those. And really, he was up there, you know, he was one of the best British wrestlers of the 21st century. And it's a shame what's happened, but I have no doubt in my mind um, that he'll come back bigger, better and stronger as he thoroughly does. Um, I have to say that on the few times I have wrestled him, for whatever reason, we have not gelled and our matches could not have not been as good as they could have been. And for that reason alone, I want him to come back so that we can have the match that I think that we both can produce. So get well, Chris, come back, and I'm going to beat the hell out of you. Thanks very much. So, so far we've had a six man, we've had a singles match, we've had a tag team match. So it's only fair that we have a battle royal. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the entrance to this over the top battle royal. Right, he's recording, now behave. Look at that, say something nice. <laughs> say something nice about Chris Travis. Who? Uh, to be <laughs> honest, it's really hard to find something nice to say about Chris Travis. We've known him a long time, that's why. Yeah, it's so a lot of the stories that we can't say. So then, the longer you know him, the more you start to... Dislike him. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, Travis is a cool guy. He's, uh, he's one of the few people that I uh, wrestled in my first mm -hmm. year or so of getting, show, getting booked elsewhere. And he was a stiff prick then, and he's a stiff prick now. So um, that hasn't changed. But he's, he's a lovely man. Yeah, yeah. He's one of the guys anyone can get on with. He helped me out a lot when I first started out on the get around. He's a genuinely nice guy. He's a terrific wrestler. I've got better hair than him, though. Never seen that. Oh, me? That's, that's, a, that's a horrible mark. Come on. See, come on. <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. This. Who cuts downwards? Love you, you, actually. Yeah, Trev, yeah. we love you. And, you know, peace. <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> the reason I'm here is because dive into the camera. Yeah. Yourself. Look into the camera and, and, and say something nice. Uh, the reason I'm here today, uh, simple reasons. Travis is uh, my best friend. Uh, he's been my best friend since day one, since we started. Uh, I'm not really an active wrestler anymore, and I haven't been for quite a while. Uh, I'm doing this because of what he's going through. Uh, he's been with me when I've had tough times and now I'm here for his tough times. Uh, it means a lot to my family. Um, I've dusted off my boots and I just want to make sure that uh, this is a special occasion for him. Now, <clears throat> I don't know Chris Travis personally, but I know one thing about us is that we have a, we have a mutual friend. We have a, a very close mutual friend and that is Preston City Wrestling. Um, I made my fortunate debut on the night that, unfortunately, Chris Travis had his last match. And um, I'm here tonight 
I'm here tonight to say thank you, Chris Travis, for, for building the foundation of that I can come to work. Presidency Wrestling has provided me with <clears throat> wonderful opportunities to, great, to wrestle fantastic wrestlers. And uh, you have played a massive part in bringing this company to where it is today. So I say thank you, and I try my best out there tonight for you. Um, I really like Trav because he's a babe, and he's a really good wrestler. And I remember one time I came here, and when I was a wee Bobby for Pro Wrestling Eve in Preston, and he was really nice to me then and everything, where he just like made sure it was all right and stuff, where I was like, oh thanks, there's actually nice people here. So I came and did this for Trav. Oh Trav, come here. The last place I'd have expected to be was back in PCW, but here I am, and it's because of you. So, terrible, it's terrible circumstances why we're here for, but the fact of the matter is, is that we're here. And uh, I'm really looking forward to going out there and uh, showing a little bit of appreciation for you. Uh, last thing I've got to say, duck one, DNA. Battle Royal! I can't get over the fact! I think I have seen a ghost! Deidre Barlow! I thought she passed on to the cobbles in the sky! But she's in the Battle Royal! Along with that beer swilling Mackham roughneck who just got a load of whatever it was. Disgusting alcohol over my best suit! Warm it down for you, filthy Mackham. Look at that moon child from the outskirts of Stonehenge, Ryan Hendricks in there, the guy with the dreadlocks. You've got the massive 30 stone Reigns, who's actually best friends with Chris Travis. Back out of retirement this evening, that's the big guy. He's oh, squashing oh, oh, Sam Viper, Viper, Viper! From Scotland, a woman! A woman! And that, the Mothman! Mothman! Come on, Deirdre! Mastiff in there, but they now with Ashton Smith, who's already wrestled once this evening. Mothman already struggling because of the bright lights in here. He's being destroyed by Roughneck. Sam Bailey also making his return. He's oh. battling it out with Reigns. Oh, oh. and that hit me, he's trying to throw. That I can't see Sam here. Wilder, Sam it Wilder. Is, Sam Wilder is, is he this guy or that guy? He's been in the battle royal before. And the ever impressive Charlie Garrett in there. It's only 23 years of age from Bath. And the bastard, dear bastard. Of course. The man who very nearly became the PCW champion at, at the Rams Super Show weekend. This is my first look at Reigns and look at that power. Uh, hang on a second, is Dave Rain meant to be in this battle royal? I thought I saw him come out, where's he? Uh, I think Rain's maybe in, combined with them, I don't know. That, that's a good point. But maybe they evaporated. Have, you, know? have, you, uh, have you got a pick for this then? Um, well, for the story, I would love to see Reigns win it. You know, this guy's from Sheffield. He travels up to the hospital with Chris Travis every week for his chemotherapy. He's been by his side every step of the way during his illness. And he used to be in the, well, he, is a, he used to be a wrestler. He retired three years ago to join the, the police force. He's a member of CID. And I think he's currently, uh, I think he's, um, He's a reading, uh, detective. He's reading, You're kidding me. He's reading Sam Wilder is right, so that's for sure. Is that when they need people disguised as the bloody moon? <laughs> Tell you who my pick is? Fight me, because I think everybody's too gentlemanly to strike a lady. Except this is PCW. I'll tell you who I don't want to win. Who? Oh. That dirty back of roughneck. Town motto, of course, of, uh, of Sunderland is nothing spouse loving like oh, that. Yeah, oh, he gets the first elimination, unfortunately. Stick a mothball in your cupboard, he's done. Oh, well, only if you're like 80 years of age, anyway. Of course, Roughneck, he's from Sunderland. Do you know how you spot a virgin in Sunderland? She's the one who can run faster than her brother. I tell you what, I'll just let you tell Mackham jokes. Never mind. Rock man has been eliminated. Never mind. Well it's done, a bug's, it's a bug's, that was a long time ago. It's a bug's life. 
Go on, Tatry! Ryan Hendricks has been eliminated! Well, that's good because I'll tell you what. He's a vegan. I, I was wondering who was going to be standing at Manchester Airport trying to stop him building on the runway now that that hippie was in here, so. Hang on a second! That's not Deirdre! It's Keith Myers! Hang on a second, that means if we've got Roughneck and Keith Myatt... Sam Wilder has been eliminated! That's the mob! That's the mob, they were a tag team in PCW! And now go. they're up against Reigns, can they rekindle their tag team expertise? So it's the mob against the policeman! This usually doesn't end well. MOP! They're going to try and get they're fighting, fighting get the giant Reigns out! Reigns has been eliminated! Oh! And Mastiff throws out the mob! And so look at that! has been eliminated! Roughneck has been eliminated! And for the second time this week, Deirdre has been eliminated! Well, I had to shake his hand, I'm sorry. It's down to the final four, and my pick's still in there, Viper. In the air against the gargantuan Dave Mastiff. The I'm muscular so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Charlie Garrett. I'm sorry, Ken. I'm sorry, Tracy. Ashton Smith. And of course, the delectable Viper. As Roughneck and Myatt on the floor, kissing big up. Please don't shove beer at me again. Please, I don't, I don't want, I don't like beer. I like soft drinks, I'm a Ribena man. People say I need a translator. What a wrestle guy. What? Oh. Always a pleasure, Keith. I wish you a mate, James. What the hell is going on? I don't know, but Viper! Viper's just eliminated Ashton Smith! Ashton Smith has been eliminated! And Charlie Garrett! has been eliminated! And Ashton and Charlie still battling on the outside. But that's pointless now. This battle royal is now down to the bastard Death Mastiff and Viper. And we know Viper can more than hold her own. Meanwhile, Charlie Garrett's trying to drop toe hold Ashton Smith in front of us here. What is going on? We've got Dave Mastiff versus Viper which you would have thought it would have been a mismatch, but Viper has been on fire in this battle royal. She has eliminated several men. But surely... She's not backing away from Mastiff. Surely, though, she's overmatched against the B-word. This crowd, who love Mastiff, are getting behind the underdog Viper. They would love to see this. You don't hear that often. The pure underdog woman. Piper. Well, that's right, but they'd love to see this pure woman. She is all woman. As the train slaps there. And oh. around. Ladies and gentlemen, Viper has been eliminated. Your winner, the bastard, Dave. Mastiff! Well, Mastiff quickly. Put paint. Oh, I got a second. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. As Dave Rain comes in, we've forgotten about Dave Rain. He hasn't been eliminated. And he tries to take advantage. Unsuccessfully. 
Yeah, that didn't work, did it? The element of surprise. As Viper makes her way to the back. Great effort from Viper. A fantastic though. effort. There you go. The rain has been eliminated. Your winner, the bastard, Dave Mastin. I'm here at PCW today. Sat on a dirty sofa in my club backstage because I felt pressured and obliged to be here. No, that's complete bullshit. I'm here for Chris Travis, someone who I met 12 years ago, maybe end of 2002, I want to say. The show in Sheffield. Um, where we both looked atrocious, we both were atrocious, oh, I think we've come a long way since, and uh, just to see everybody here backstage today, and all the fans turn out for him, is really special, and uh, let's hope you know, he gets all soon, all the best mate. Tyler Bate, Ryan Small, Lee and Jim the Hunter Brothers, we are here at Shooting Star PCW's charity fundraiser for pro wrestler Chris Travis. As we know, Chris Travis is currently battling stomach cancer and we are here all with the same goal as every other wrestler out there tonight. And we're here to raise as much money as, as we can with the fans to give and to support Chris Travis as much as we can. And we've all had our experiences. I know lads, you've had your experiences with Trav. Yeah. We worked Project Ego two or three times, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Each time was a pleasure. Um, Chris Travis is the very least we can do to help him um, and he as well as us are as happy and uh, grateful that people are here tonight and are here to donate for a very good man. I agree. I've wrestled Chris Travis just the once and it was something I always wanted to do. We had a great match and he gave me such great advice and I think, um, I think the phenomenal response um, to, to all of this and the support from the fans is very fitting to someone like Trav because to me I think he's an amazing guy and his fight through this and he will get through it is just as phenomenal as the support from the bands. See when I was first breaking into this business uh, I was invited to go on the holiday camps uh, and that was when I first met Chris Travis. Now I didn't really know a fat lot about him but I really got to know him in that short time that I was with him. He's a great guy, an outstanding performer. He truly has become a household name in British wrestling, and I can only pray for the best. I remember the first time I actually properly sat down with Chris after wrestling two or three times, like James said, and we never actually spoke on a, a friendship level. And we was travelling to Leicester in a car, and he was telling me a story about how himself and Joel Allen and Dave Minton um, really wound up um, Boise from Only Fools and Horses and we had a, we had a giggle and a laugh and uh, I told him about Apollo Creed and uh, ever since that like me and Chris just talk about winding up celebrities and um, I hope Chris beats the fight and goes all the way and I hope he gets back in the ring and I hope to wrestle him again. Trav, this is for you. For you Trav, for you Trav mate. Hope you get your picture with Boise. <laughs> <laughs> done and Flash Morgan Webster taking on the team of the Hunter brothers Ryan Smile and Tyler Bates. The teenage strongman Tyler Bates fans already enamoured with his moustache. It is rather twirly. Yep, the native of Netherton Dudley is uh, 15 stone. Um, he's got that, that sort of hybrid style between like a uh, sort of a modern sort of wrestler and, and the old school, especially with that look of his with that moustache. You ready? You ready? In the ball! I love the retro look of Flash Morgan Webster, whose Twitter handle says that he likes 80s music and Harrington jackets, and it usually comes out to a town called Malice. Yet in conversation with him earlier, he actually revealed that he likes 1970s sex romantic comedies and Harrington. Well, I was a little bit illusion well, shattered, I have to say. Well, we'll see if we've got confessions of a wrestler here tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, hey, I'll tell you Let's what, carry on. Well, yes, indeed. And Mark Andrews is certainly that's for uh, Drake and Ralph Boy, I would say. Oh, you don't really watch it, do you? I have no idea what Harry Potter is. 
Here's the man that beats dozens and dozens of the best talent in the UK to earn a contract in America. Mark Andrews, White Lightning, back in a PCW ring. He's going on the TNA UK tour next week, and then he's going to fly out to America in March to join. Well, international television superstardom. Yep, absolutely, and we get to see him here tonight. That's right, well, you get to see all the stars, all the stars in Preston City Wrestling. You don't know who you might see. In March, we're going to see John Morrison again. We're not just going to see John Morrison, though. We're going to see Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy, that's right. I'll tell you what, though, I'm really looking forward to John Morrison because you see him wrestling in the Road to Glory tournament. Not only, only the Aero assassin Will Ospreay. Oh, yes. Oh, one of the American, the American free runner against the, the, the master of the spectacular Will Ospreay. That's going to be something to see. Isn't it just Will Ospreay, a very popular PCW. Acrobatic moves. Webster here seems to be doing quite well. He's got a lot of charisma. He looks like he's straight out of the Italian job, but he's got personality flash forward with Webster from Wales. Taking down the Hunter brothers, Lee and Jim. I still have no idea which is which. Oh, I worked this out. Right. Denny's one looks like Shawn Michaels. The other one looks like Francis Rossi. Oh, status quo. I prefer that other other analogy you gave earlier backstage. Which one? You said one looks like. Oh, the, the one that looks like Drew Galloway in the wash. Yeah, he does. Have that one. Oh. Oh. Spinning wheel kick from Ryan Smiley. Another lad who really likes the spectacular. He's got great timing and a lot of personality. That's Ryan Smile. And look at that! Ooh. It's basically a showcase for the Midlands and Wales, for the centre of the United Kingdom. Most of the wrestlers in here are from the Midlands. Including uh, Damien Dunn. Pete Dunn tagged Damien Dunn. Damien Dunn called me Pete Dunn, and Pete Dunn called me Damien Dunn. <laughs> Don't get these two mixed up. No, that would be horrendous. Who would do that? Somebody put them in a match together, possibly. The Dunn brothers, even though they're not actually brothers. Great double team, though, by Ryan Smile and Tyler Bates. And again, that never stopped the Dunn did it? Oops. Pete Dunn's kind of got that, uh, just in case you have trouble picking the Dunn's apart, Pete Dunn's kind of got that Marilyn Manson looking. What? At the moment. Yeah, You're thinking of him from the 90s, I mean, how he looks now. Yeah, he, he's kind of like the missing link between uh, Marilyn Manson and Nicolas Cage. Meanwhile, we're seeing a pretty impressive delayed suplex by the teenage strongman, Tyler Bates. Beautiful head on, on Damien Dunn. Well, he's a, a very proficient technician, Damien Dunn, for a young man. He is. Oh. They, saw it, European uppercut. Sends him off, drops down, nice oh. kick by Damien. Applauded by his teammates, uh, some good camaraderie on that team there. Yeah. Speaking of throwbacks, you've got um, the retro mod of Flash Morgan Webster. Tyler Bates looks like he's come straight out of... I don't know, 1930s Strongman Circus. 1920s oh. Travelling Show People Sideshow type Circus. Like circus, I guess. Yeah, well done, you. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's this? You know what this is. What's what? That's what they're doing now. Scrub? <laughs> it does look that way, doesn't it? It's sort of half a, half a scrub! And that's a scrub down, Stallion! You're right. I've got a million of them. <laughs> Please don't tell me you're here all day. White Lightning standing tall. Meanwhile, everybody else is outside the ring at this eight man tag here with the Chris Travis charity show. And he's in the ropes. That's Joel Allen. White Lightning. Oh, big power slam there from, from Pete Dunn. I suppose Pete Dunn is the power man at this match. Oh, apart from Tyler Bate, obviously, if a teenage strongman 
showing his pure strength as he gets Flash Morgan up on his shoulders, trying to steal the win for his team. Nice spinning elbow by Damien Dunn. Knee lift. Diamonds carry, backbreaker, double team, Tyler Bates. In a, a load of trouble. As once again, the, the Welsh from the Midlander, oh, that sent into each other, and Tyler Bates picks up Damien Dunn like he's a An airplane spin. Oh, I've seen him, he usually does about 25 revolutions, but he saw, he saw Flash oh. Morgan. Oh, look at this, no. No way. Oh, let we're gone. Unbelievable. Upper body strength from Tyler Bates. Just giant swing. Look at the teamwork. And the Hunter brothers and Ryan Smile all getting in the action. Pete Dunn makes the save. I still can't over that combination aeroplane split and giant swing by Tyler Bates. Desperately impressive from, from this young man. How old's the kid? 17, 18? He's unreal. Oh. Well, we do have a myriad of talent down there at the moment. We do indeed, they're all outside the ring, apart from Tyler Bate at the moment. Tyler Bate looks like he's setting up for something. He hits the far side. Oh! Not only is he a powerhouse, this kid can fly! Tyler Bate, the star of the match for me so far. Absolutely. And when you consider the talent that's in there, the likes of Mark Andrews. Holy moustache indeed. Meanwhile, Ryan Smile is dragging himself upright. Surely he's, he will not be outdone in the hot dog in state, that's for sure. This kid is flashy with a capital F. Oh, but here comes the master. The boot camp winner. And he's not about to let some of his British contemporaries steal his high-flying thunder. Oh, but Ryan Smile just did he cut him off. Kicks the face, picks him up. Great buster. He can't catch his flash Morgan. He's DDT by Webster! Beautiful! Beautiful! Tiger suplex! But in comes Big Dog, muscles him up! What on earth? Some sort of pump handle block! Big super kick by Leo Jim Hunter! Code breaker by Damian Dunn! In comes Jim or Lee Hunter! I have no idea. Jim's the one in the turquoisey black trunks. Thanks. We'll wait just a second. Oh! Did he just tombstone his own brother? Yep, and then got kicked in the head for his trouble. Why did he do that? There's no way! Right? Oh! It's a double reverse springboard double bulldog by Ryan Smile. And I've just, I've never seen half these moves before. That's fine, we can just call them what we like, I and nobody will know. And I'm telling you, tell you something, I know the words, I know the names of most moves in wrestling, and I genuinely haven't seen half this <laughs> Big Ed Zagiri by White Lightning. Who's going to win this one? Yeah. Ryan Smile, determined to score a massive victory. I don't know it would be, but Northern Lights suplex. Stop. Double stop by Mark Andrews. The man who's going to make his name on the other side of the pond, determined to show who's boss here in this eight man tag. One, two, three, four. Triple kick action. Ryan smiles like such a jelly. Flash Morgan Webster over the top, takes out the opposition. This is crazy. This is awesome. Fans are loving it here in Preston. Tyler Bates got white lightning up to the aeroplane spin. No, no, no. 
Oh, once again, the teenage strongman. Hurricane oh, tries to press it. But reverse. Rewind. Hurricane roll oh, by Andrew. Oh, it's the leg. Hey. That's phenomenal. The first time in two years, Mothman has come back for one man. In honour of one man who is in the biggest fight. And that's why I'm here to support Chris Travis. I've known Trav over a decade, photographed him, not as Mothman, but as the other person. And through that time, I've seen the boy become not a man, but a superstar. And he's gracious, funny. That's why I'm here, to support my friend. And uh, I'd like to thank PCW for, for bringing this up. Um, so, so how do I know Chris Travis? Well, actually, it goes back about 11 years. Trav, believe it or not, was my opponent in my very first wrestling match. Um, which means that he had an opportunity to stop all this before it even happened. And didn't do anything about it. So he's pretty much to blame for everything there. Cheers, Trav. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for all eight men! And your referee for this next contest, Mr. Des Robinson. And ladies and gentlemen, this match is a singles match set for one fall. Uh, I'm here tonight to pay tribute to one of my best friends, Chris Travis. Uh, I broke into the business with him 11 years ago now. Um, and every time we always wrestle, he always makes me up my game. So when Chris is on the show, you know he's bringing everything. So he always keeps us on our toes with performances. So this one's for you, Nate. Preston City Wrestling, welcome to the Ryan Hendricks experience. But today it's not about the vegan Prince of Justice. It's about the shooting star, Chris Travis, a wrestler that before I even began wrestling, I used to watch him on PW. I was a fan of wrestling. He was a guy, him and Martin Kirby as Project Ego, they stood out to me. It was exciting, it was fast. And he is one of the greatest wrestlers of the UK right now. And Chris, I've never met you before properly. We've never met in the ring, but one day I would love to wrestle you. It would be an absolute honor and a privilege. So I wish, I wish you all the best. I will send my positive vibes to you. And I hope that you get well soon, my friend. I'm sure you'll be fine. So, they now know me as the villain, professional wrestling's true villain. Well, it's quite ironic because Chris Travis is a good friend of mine and even though some might say I'm the villain, Travis really is a hero to many people. What he's been through, his illness, the fact that he stayed so strong, so positive, I had one of the best matches in my career with Chris Travis maybe six months ago and Travis didn't know at the time but he was already sick then and we had a hell of a match, we beat the crap out of each other and I loved him so much for it, it was a match I really needed, a match he needed and uh, yeah we really, you know, we really made some fireworks and the fact that he was ill at the time and didn't know it is just absolutely insane and the way he stayed so strong, so positive, he just, uh, you know, he really is a hero for many people. He's a hero for me, and uh, the amount of times I've spoke to Travis and needed someone to confide in, needed someone to get advice from, he's, he's always been there. So that's why I'm here. I'm here because Travis is, he is one of our best friends. We don't get to spend too much time together, uh, but I always love to see him, always like to talk to him, and it's an absolute honour and pleasure to be here wrestling in aid with Chris Travis today. Gentlemen, this is a singles match set for one fall, one fall. and it is for the PCW Cruiserweight Championship. Yeah. Introducing first to my right, weighing in at 190 pounds from Cambridge City, the villain Marty Skull. And weighing in at 
185 pounds from the blue side of Moss Side, Manchester. He is the current reigning and defending PCW Cruiserweight Champion, Bubblegum! Oh, and an umbrella attack from the start as Marty Skull Shorting is desperate to win this title. And this is an interesting concoction of a match. Indeed it is, because for the first time, Bubble comes oh. fighting somebody who will break the rules just as much as him to get the championship, and Marty Skull nearly got it. And a tremendous early ambush on Bubblegum. Bubblegum looked a little bit intimidated to me. The hole, the fur coat, the sinister theme music, the umbrella pointing at him, the villain seems to have got inside the rascal's head. Yeah, you're right. Oh. Bubblegum coming straight back. Straight through the ropes there. What an incredibly high octane start to this PCW Cruiserweight Championship match. The best in the light of weight wrestlers in the UK. And Marty Skull has come all the way from Cambridge City. The host of Wrestle Talk TV on Challenge TV. A multi talented, a cerebral individual. A man who can talk. A man who clearly is refined and dresses well. But a man who can wrestle. A man who will take any shortcut to win. I think that's a, a fair and very good assessment. But you've got to bear in mind who he's actually up against here. Well, he's up against a man who's, who's done, done just that on many occasions, hasn't he? Exactly, exactly. Whereas we've only seen Marty Skull here once before. Uh, I don't know if you remember who his opponent was when he was here. It was, a long time. it was a long time ago. Fittingly, it was Chris Travis. He lost to Chris Travis. Ah, on his well, that's debut. interesting. Of course, we're all here for Chris Travis this evening. And I'm sure wherever Travis is, he's thoroughly enjoying the action that we're seeing here in this match. Big bulldog by Bubblegum who sticks his hands down his Beano pants. He certainly is a menace. The little brother of Team Single held that Cruiserweight Championship, of course, since he defeated April Davids for it. Yep, absolutely. And since then, he's, he's become more and more impressive as Bubblegum. I mean, he's had, to, if we're talking about singles competition, he's won 17, lost 16. He's got a win ratio of 52%. Wow. Yeah. I've got to look at who he's beaten in opportunistic fashion. Austin Aries, Brian Kendrick, Paul London. Yeah. yeah. Oh. He has, interestingly, where Bubblegum has faced uh, Chris Travis before, never one on one here in this Beautiful uppercut by Marty Skull. Here comes the villain. Oh! I wonder what Bubblegum's game plan's got to be for this. Because as you say, Marty Skull doesn't mind breaking the rules whatsoever. In fact, he's famed for it. Well, he is, but he's a great athlete as well. He's very clever but and very so is calculating. Bubblegum. Bubblegum is also a great athlete. So then what does Bubblegum resort to? He resorts to those tactics that will allow him to win. Well, he's up against a master of those same tactics. So he's going to have to pull something else out of that little woolly hat of his. And I think the fact the crowd were actually starting to warm to the villain because they, they, they can't stand Bubblegum. But that was until the villain decided that really he doesn't need the support of the fans and started applauding himself. Well, he doesn't need the fans to warm to him, not with that nice fur coat that he has. He didn't see any um, sort of vivisectionists in the car park, did you, outside Club Evoke this evening? No, no protests going on. Is she some sort of a designer? No, that's Vivian Westwood. All oh, right, whatever. I'm talking about, you know, animal lovers. You know, tree huggers. You can get arrested tree. for that. <laughs> Tree huggers like Ryan Hendricks. You know, those sort of people. It's like when my brother got arrested. Sell me, it said, when you've been arrested for? He says, I got arrested for the police. He says, what do you mean? He says, I believe you. No, I can't tell that joke. It's a charity show, yes, goddammit. <laughs> I wonder when the Wrestle Talk champ was going to start. There's no need. I'd be on that show if it wasn't in, filmed in London on Tuesday night. Yeah, I can believe that. They've got some cheap substitute for what's it called? 
mm, Ben Spiller or something. Uh, yep. oh! From Armstrong and Spiller. I can't remember the company's name. I'm sure oh, the villain Marty Skull would love to add the PCW prestigious Cruiserweight Champion. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the next episode of Wrestle Talk sat there with Francesca Wood on that? Sorry, sofa. just stop there. Stop there. I'm fine. Are you all right with that? That, that thought's just perfect. I was going to say, and he has that shiny. I don't. You don't. No, you really do want me to carry on now. That shiny belt on the coffee table. What, they can actually stretch to a coffee table these days, can't they? Right? Just kidding! What the <laughs> But if Marty Skirl does win, it'll be rather skirlish of him, I would have thought. Skirlish? I like that turn of phrase. Oh, Bubblegum much. with a beautiful handspring. Oh, but caught with a nice yeah. German suplex. Oh. Marty Skirl moves straight in with a beautiful flying forearm. Hooks the leg, and we're going to see a new champion in the villain. Not quite. Not quite. Nearly. Not quite. Well, they were chanting Mary Poppins at him earlier, but let me tell you something. There's no spoonful of sugar about Martin Skrull. He's all spice. And he's no Wally with a brolly either. How about that? Great reversal by Skrull. And the man from Cambridge City Trying to put a submission hold, I think, on Bubblegum, who's a little bit disorientated. He's gonna have to come, he's gonna have to pull something out of his rabbit, of, rabbit out of his hat or box of tricks or whatever it is. I hope he's not pulling anything out of his rabbit. Well, he might have to. Plants Marty Skull, one, two. Skull gets that shoulder up. Yeah, still got enough about him to kick out. He realizes what's on the line here. Bubblegum has done the third most PCW shows, joint with Martin Kirby. All oh right, who's done the most? I do know the answer to this. I'm, I'm sorry, I thought I was the perfect question to follow that little statement up with. Sorry I mean, if I've put you, you in an awkward stuff spot. like this to me. Always put me on the spot. Meanwhile, the action is still fast and furious here in the PCW Cruiserweight Championship match. Great release. Suplex from Marty Skull. It's T-Bone, by the way. Thank you. Most shows and matches. Cheers. <laughs> Skull going for it again. Oh! This time drops him onto his knee. That's going to really ah! put some serious pressure on the spine of Bubblegum. But Bubblegum is showing, well, you know, dare I say it, great courage. Are these fans actually going to get behind the guy they know, the devil they know, instead of the devil they don't? Well, I think that the fans are agreeing with you. Because they're chanting for their favourite rent boy. That's Harvey Dale. <laughs> How apt that he should walk through during that chant. No, 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 no. I'm just saying I've seen Harvey Dale. Oh, right, I That's see. That's all. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He hasn't brought Basque yeah. or Horsa, oh. has he? God, I hope not. <laughs> I know people are working for free, but that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Super kick by Bubblegum. Oh. Huge clothesline by Marty Skrull. Yeah. Yeah. Both guys yeah. down. One. Referee Des Robinson checking on both men. It's got check time in the Cruiserweight Championship match. Bubblegum's title reign is stretching on and on and on. But the villain has come determined, in great shape, and extremely focused. And this you rent for ya! This guy knows championship gold brings the chance of greater opportunities in the future, greater money. Prestige, standing in British wrestling. Roll up by Bubblegum after a cheap shot, hooks the leg and he gets him! Hey buddy, hope you're doing good. Um, 
there's a lot I could really say about you and what this show means and everything else. And Trav and I, we go back, I don't know about how many years, but as far as here at PCW, it was my matches with Trav that really put me in the map here um, and really helped PCW grow as a company. And, you know, Trav's been a good friend for such a long time and to see what he's going through now, um, it's really, really emotional. And, you know, I remember like last year, like myself, when I went through some, some things with obviously my neck injury, that night Trav was one of a couple of people who came to the hospital with me and it must have been about two or three o'clock in the morning after I had my x-rays and everything else and Trav just curled up in the floor without a blanket or anything and just said to me I'm not going anywhere and he stayed with me as long as he could and ultimately he kicked out of the hospital because he wasn't allowed to be there but the fact that he just you know came to the hospital with me he didn't care that he didn't have any stuff with him he didn't have a change of clothes he had shows the next day to get to he just didn't care all I wanted to do was be there for me and um, now it's my turn to be there for you and everyone else that's here tonight at PCW and everyone around British, European wrestling and even the rest of the world. We love you man and we can't wait to see you back. So would you like a tag title match? Yes please. Your referee for this contest Mr Joel Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a tag team match and it is for the PCW Tag Team Championships. Introducing first. Okay, this is the UK Hooligans and I'm the Rowdy Ricky Knight. And tonight, we are here for one man and one man only. And that's Trap. Because the Hooligans and me, we spend all our life fighting and scrapping and bullying. But one thing about the hooligans and the rowdy man is we're loyal to our friends and Trav is our friend. That's why we've travelled six hours to get here tonight in honour of Trav. Is that right, Zach? That's 100% right. And you know what, Trav? The first day I met you, it was because you were texting my baby sister. <laughs> Brittany Knight, aka Paige, and Trav, that didn't go down too well with the hooligans or the knights. <laughs> Not very well. But we realised you're a genuine guy. We realised you're one of the boys, and we realised that you valued her friendship rather than her underwear. So, Trav, yeah, you right, will brother. always, always, always be a part of the Knight family. That's right. You will always, always, always have British wrestling running through your blood. And while you are in that ring, and while you are in British wrestling, you will always have the Knights and the Hooligans side by side. For Christopher Travis. And watching your back every step of the way. This takes me back, it really. Good evening, Preston! I am Rowdy Ricky Knight. You can cheer, I am Rowdy Ricky Knight. These are my sons. We have Zack Knight. We have Roy Knight. They are the UK Hooligans. Let me tell you something. We are here for three reasons. Reason one, what we're here for, everybody's here for tonight, our good friend, Trav. We're all here, Trav, yeah? <laughs> See, Trav is just one of the nice guys and a bloody good wrestler to boot. It took us six hours to get out of a tram. I would have travelled six weeks, let me tell you. That's how I figured. Trap! Stomach is good because we all agree on one. 
old thing before it even start. We all love trap. The second reason is, the second reason, everybody keeps telling me, Peacing Dump is a place to be. Not wrong. Let me tell you guys and girls, I'm sat there and I've watched the show and you're damn right, it's a place to be! Yeah. And I'll tell you something, this is a great company, but I'll tell you something now. You, each and every one of you, are fantastic fans and you make tonight really special. Oh, I'll thank you for that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, apart from them two reasons, the other is, my hooligans have been collecting titles all over Europe, okay, and we want a prestige title, which is a PCW title, so we're coming in tonight to wrestle the team back. So for YouTube purposes, we're not allowed to have entrances because of copyright law. And right now, we're supposed to say something nice about Chris Travis and the reason why we're here is to support Trav, etc, etc, bloody blah, blah, bloody blah. Fuck you, Trav. I've uh, had a cold all week, I've got a sore throat. Um, I would have been here come hell or high water. If I didn't have a vice, I'd have been here because it's Trav, um, who is just one of the nicest guys I've ever met and just an amazing wrestler. Um, I took a break from PCW, I called it a retirement, but hey, I came back. Trav spent an hour of my last show um, persuading me to stay because he felt I was, uh, I was that good. Trav, I love you forever. You're an inspiration. Get well soon, my friend. They survived the Dudley boys! Look at the Kendrick! Like, now they're gonna get in the ring of the hooligans! Could not give a shit about trap! Hey, That's a call, Paul. And secondly! I thought it was 600. Parker! Read the right up properly. These two have done. Fuck all to deserve a tag team title match. They're an extremely decorated team. Brothers, been wrestling all over the country for one of the biggest, most respected wrestling families. Oh, and this, the Knight family. And they've started battering each other on the floor. And this is just going to be one big fight. He certainly is having to keep out of the way. I know what the Knight Brothers can do. I've been around the Knight Brothers for about 12 years. I've known this lad, Zack Knight, since he was 13 years old. And he used to wear a mask. And he was a little skinny kid. Been wrestling since he was in primary school, that's all he knows. And now look at him, he's massive. He's grown up. He looks up to his big brother, Roy, and now he's bigger than him. Double hip toss, hooligans. It's hooliganism. Hooliganism running wild here in Preston. Look at Rabbits trying to get in there. The brothers of WWE, former Divas champion Paige. The sons of the Rowdy Mounters at ringside, one of British wrestling's most decorated veterans, Ricky Knight, and also her. Is that it's, Ricky Knight? That's Ricky Knight. I thought that Ricky was Knight. Ted Bulbas. <laughs> Ricky Knight! You do the dated references. And of course, the matriarch of the Knight clan. We saw her, she was backstage earlier today. I've not seen her in years. Sweet Soraya. What a family they are, they are a fighting family. And they are going to take it to T-Bone and Rampage. And I'll tell you something, we talked about all the American wrestlers. 
all the top teams that Team Single have beaten in this incredible title reign, but they've not been in the ring with the Knights, and the Knights don't care. They do not care. As they've just battered Rampage with a chair there. We have seen, we've gone through the list of teams that uh, T-Bone and Rampage have gone through time and time again. This time though, they are up against some proper hard gets. They certainly are. Roy Knight, let me tell you something, he's had, a, he's had, his, he's had his checkered past, hasn't he? Oh. Little bit, the, the former Zebra Kid. Oh my goodness me, huge clothesline by Roy. Zach, meanwhile, taking it to Rampage Brown. Zach's got away about 17 stone. You can't, can't believe that this kid can't believe used to be. Kid. He used to be a light heavyweight champion. A light heavyweight champion. Let that sink in. Look at the size of him. He's dwarf and rampage. Oh, and he still knows his manners though, doesn't he? Ricky and Soraya brought him up right. They brought him up in the wrestling business. And is there any action actually going to happen in the ring yet? Or no, is he... Oh, where's Zach going? Zach, what are you doing? I'll tell you why, he's taking a leaf out of his oh. hand. Oh. Past. There's still a bit of that cruiserweight in him. Chair shot to the head by the... The elder brother, Roy Knight. I've never seen anybody that just battering the living hell out of Team Single. Oh, Look at the Jesus. rowdy man, Ricky Knight. He was a great tag team wrestler in his time. One of the fabulous Superflies. The super the flies, notorious yes. Superflies. Jimmy Ocean. Jimmy Ocean, yes. that's right. Yes. Remember though, this storied feud they had with the Liverpool lads, Robbie Brookside and Doc Dean. And Ricky Knight retired from ring ring competition. Yeah, about October 15 last year. months ago. But he's managed since then, he's gone to ringside. He is guiding the careers of his own flesh and blood, his two sons of whom he is so proud. And he is moulding them in his own image to never take a backward step. And you can't afford to when you're in there against the likes of Rampage Brown and Tyson Tabor. Many but times though, I'll tell you something, many times T-Bone and Rampage have been on the defensive in tag team title defences. They've met guys who are bigger than them. They've met guys who maybe even be tougher than them. They've met guys who are quicker than them. But the fact is, is that when it comes to the crunch, a bit like bubblegum, when it comes down to the closing moments of the match when men are tired and brains aren't always working properly, they can still think clearly in the heat of battle. Absolutely. And what you find with these guys is they absorb that punishment early on. And I think that's a tactic and it's a strength because what they're doing is a fight. Oh my! Roy Knight, superplexing. One. Rampage Brown. Tag it in his little brother's sack. She can't call him a little brother. I can't, brother. can I? I can't get over this. <laughs> I managed against him in Bournemouth. I managed James Ty against him in Bournemouth in 2005. And he would have fit in my pocket. And, and now look at the side. It's like a mice and men and they've just tagged in Lenny. T-Bone's in there though. Huge super kick. Zach slightly dazed by that one. It's like, it's like watching Finney Jones in there, in the wrestling ring. Which one? He's gonna, he's gonna grab his testicles in a minute. Oh, like he's Gaza. Yeah. I just, I just can't get over how dominant the UK hooligans have been. They have come here determined and focused. And this is like old school Roy Knight. This is like when he was the Zebra Kid. He used to hit that elbow off the top. Oh. Yes, he's done it. Elbow on a nutsack. Is there a special scientific name for that, Lambert? The Knight family. Dominating team single, but here comes Rampage. Jawbreaker on Zach. Tags in T-Bone, now we'll see the tag team continuity that team single is so famous for. Huge reverse knife face chop. 
by the tattooed T-Bone. Whips Zack Knight, hits him with a drop kick right under the, under the chin. That might have possibly do it. A couple of headshots from Zack, it might be dazed. <laughs> Sends it to the post now, Rampage. Ricky Knight's out there. Ricky Knight is 61 years of age. But let me tell you something, he's still tougher than men half his age. One. Tougher I wouldn't mess with him, I wouldn't mess with Ricky, no, God knows, God knows. God knows. Two. Two. In the past, I always kept well away. You don't mess with the rowdy man. Well, I'll tell you what, Team Single have not been put off by Ricky, Ricky Knight's presence there at uh, a ringside. Sunset flip by Tebow, pulling out a wrestling move. Look at that, Zach using that girth to good advantage, tags in Roy. Snap there by the elder hooligan, Norfolk's finest. And it's been, well, it's been quite beautiful so far. I have to say, it really has. Sorry. He goes for the elbow again. He hits it again. Could this be new champions? Are we going to see the end of the 600 plus day reign? That's day reign, not Dave reign. Thankfully. There they have. They've been champions since the 1st of June 2013. It's ridiculous. How amazing is that? What a reign. Well, we and again, not Dave reign. We're still in recession then, weren't we? That's 86 weeks. I mean, that's a year, seven months, 23 days. 14,448 hours. Have you been working this out? Yes, because I'm very, very smart. Sad. No, you're just doing your job, Stallion. Very well done, very well done to you. Don't patronize me. Do you even know what patronizing means? It means talking down to somebody. Oh, look at that. Joel Allen didn't see it. He didn't see the chair shot. From oh, this will be true. Roy they're Knight. not, oh, not going to get a title if he does that. No, no, he'll get disqualified. You can't win the championship on a disqualification. But look at that, he's keeping Joel Allen preoccupied, allowing Zach to come in and use the chair. Takes out Rampage. Here comes Zach Knight. Full head of steam. Big leg drop. Are we going to see the hooligans do it here? It's got to end at some point. All championship reigns come to a conclusion. This could be the night. The night. Ah, the night. The, the night. Won the night. Won it. Absolutely. Doing it for Chris Travis. Oh! Moonsault. Oh, but that could Certainly be a mistake by the young man. The young man got a rush of blood to the head. Big uppercut from Tebow. Massive right hand. Sets up Zach. Reverse. Goes for the sunset again. Zach Knight makes for Rampage. Picks him up. Oh, look at the strength of Zach! Oh! Taking out both of Team Single at once. It's not pretty, but it does the job. The Bother Boys of British Wrestling on a roll here. Every time T-Bone and Rampage have got the advantage, the Knights have found a way to turn the tide. But, oh, wait a second. This is classic now, Team Single. They isolate one man. And then they set him up for that, which usually ends with a Rampage pile driver. This is just a proper good old fashioned fight, this. Now sending Zach to the outside. Oh, oh, I, don't, I think that they were thinking about the pile drive, but I don't think that they were confident. I, I actually thought that Rampage there, looking at the lower extremities of Zach Knight, thought, I'm not going to get this kid up for a pile driver. And now referee Joel Allen is counting as T Bone pairs off with Roy. Zach is fighting it out with Rampage on the other side of Club Evoke. It's a proper Friday night nightclub brawl. It's up to Ricky eight. Knight looks on. They're up to eight. This can Nine. only benefit Team Single. That's right, it's going to be a double count out. It is. Ladies and gentlemen, 
due to a double count out, this match has been declared a draw. There are wow. not many draws here in PCW. Therefore, still tag team champions, Team Single. Let me tell you something, the rain goes on. But I am telling you, Team Single engineered that situation. They, I have never seen them on the defensive so much in a match. The hooligans had momentum. The hooligans put in an incredible performance and T-Bone and Rampage, I genuinely believe, feared for their titles here tonight. I really do. We're all here today to say get well to Chris Travis because Chris Travis is one of the most popular, maybe even the most popular man in all of British wrestling. And as a ring announcement commentator, for me, every match that I've called for Chris Travis has been, it's not just been an honour, it's been easy. That man goes out there and gives you 100% every single time, it doesn't matter where he is, and he puts on the kind of matches that makes my job easy. And personally, he's just a lovely guy, he's got time to chat to everyone, Everyone in the locker room will have had a chat with Chris Travis by the end of the night, whatever show he's on. And he really is just one of the most awesome people you're ever going to meet. And I just want to say, get well, Trav. Is it on? Is it, is it on? Is it on? I hate these. I really do hate them. Come on. Get in the zone. I'm tired. I'm tired. Is it on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I'm I hate these travel. I really do. I, I hate talking. That's why I brought a friend who uh, I've known since probably 2006, um, and ever since then we've pretty much tagged up all over the country, won loads of belts. Carried me. For <laughs> a tough time. I rode his coattails for quite a few years as well. Um, so, and he's one of my best friends in life outside of wrestling as well. So that's why I'm here today for you, Trav, and that's why I'm going out there to go beat Chris Masters. And what I've done is. I've shaved my head in support of your curves. <laughs> so I can feel like. He's part of the male pattern baldness. <laughs> I love you, man. Love you, Rob. Love you, man. In all seriousness, we're here for a great cause today, and that's in aid of our good friend and fellow wrestler, Chris Travis. Chris, if anyone can beat this, you can, and we've got all our love and support coming your way. Chris, you kick ass in the ring, so there's no doubt you're going to kick ass in this battle, man. Chris, you're one of my favourite opponents, so the following display of flips, forearms, mods, and knee drops, this one's for you. High spots, baby, yeah! Whoa. This match means a lot, this night means a lot to Martin Kirby, you just tell by looking at his face. Just as a microphone. Thank you. Man, oh man, do I look good in pink or what? Yes, you do, Chris. Oh, that, that's just jealousy. Come on, don't hate. As a matter of fact, I look so good in pink, I think I'm going to change my wrestling gear to an all-pink wardrobe. No. Seeing as that Chris Travis will never, ever wear it again. That's harsh. For my champion, he's, he's entitled to his opinion. I'm totally inappropriate on a night where everybody's come together to support Chris Travis. We've heard some despicable comments from Tyson T-Bone and now Masterpiece Chris Masters. It's absolutely disgraceful. And the PCW fans are telling Chris Masters so. The former PCW champion, Stallion, the man who lost the title to in that three-way match. 
disgusting fashion no, after a terrible weekend. That was a horrible weekend. No. It was well deserved New Heart Nation won that championship. I disagree. At the weekend of honour. Yes, the Super Show weekend of honour. What a great happening that was. I want to see that. Well, as you've already mentioned, uh, Martin Kirby, of course, very good friend. Of the guy that we're all here to, to say it and put on the show for today, Chris Travis. But he's also massively overpowered over out of his depth in terms of uh, the weight advantage against the master pace. Look at the, you know, he's, he's, most of us, you know, <laughs> we go home for Christmas and we stuff ourselves stupid and we put on a few pounds. Chris Masters looks in even better shape in 2015 than he did in 2014. He looks incredibly impressive as he always does. Chris Masters, of course, has had a story passed with, uh, with Chris Travis himself, hasn't he? With those amazing run of matches. That's right, and then that last man standing match. Who could forget that? Oh, all over this building. Was Travis won. Ah! And Masters probably never forgot the fact that Travis got the edge over him. And that's probably yeah! something to do with his uh, rather barbed comments earlier. Oh. Side headlock by Martin Kirby. Moves into a brick wall from Los Angeles, California. Kirby's got to rethink his strategy here. He's used to wrestling. Wrestlers of a similar size to him. You know, he's had his biggest matches have been against Jushin Thunder Liger, one of the greatest cruiserweights of all time. Yes, Tommaso absolutely. Ciampa, who is certainly not the size of Masters. And Lance Storm also. He can't handle me. A technical wrestler, not a powerhouse, not six foot four. Yeah, it was a mixed weekend for Martin Kirby at, uh, at the Super Show of Honor. Whilst well, he lost uh, to Lance Storm, of course, in a phenomenal match, he also got a win up there against Cedric Alexander, which uh, Chris Moss has just had a terrible, awful, hideous weekend. It hasn't knocked the cockiness out of his uh, persona, though, has it? Because he realises that he's got Uha Nation walking around carrying his title. It saves him some weight in his bag, I suppose. But he'll get it back. Shit. Never seen a mirror he didn't like, Chris Masters. I haven't seen a mirror I don't like. Full of pictures of me. God knows how many years bad luck you've got with that Euler crash. Yep! Well, I'm stuck sat next to you commentating, so it looks as though it's a fair few. As I ignore that, I will mention the fact that Chris Masters does have that rematch. Coming up against Uha Nation, loser leaves PCW. Chris Masters' days could be numbered. He's talking about Trav never wrestling again in a PCW ring. Once a Uha Nation gets through with him, we, you know, Masters may have a one-way ticket back to the, uh, the Golden Coast. Well, we've both got a difference of opinion on that. But tonight's about forgetting those differences of opinion come together. Well, they're supposed to be, but Chris Masters makes comments like that, and all the goodwill evaporates in this building. And let's create some goodwill. Let's. Right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you a nice little story, right? I've been doing a little bit of journalism and I've been uh, knocking around and finding uh, little things out. Everyone has a lovely story to tell about Chris Travis. And yes. We've heard some uh, this evening, of course, but from further afield from some of his friends and that sort of thing, he had a friend who tore his, uh, his meniscus, um, you know, and was still found out that he had cancer. He was still helping this guy and encouraging him along, you know. I've spoken to young lads on the on the wrestling circuit who he's given no! advice to. Yeah. Everyone's got some no! nice thing to say about Chris Travis. He's totally selfless, Hike! Trav, yeah. you know. Oh! He's Hike! dealing with what's happening yeah. to him at the age of oh. 31. Oh. I mean, that's what a lot of people ah, you have to really yeah, point yeah, out. Yeah. That cancer is a, an unforgiving and horrendous yeah. disease. Oh! And it affects young people in the prime of their lives and careers, as well as older people. 
You know, Trav has dealt with it with such dignity. He's an inspiration to everyone. You're absolutely and with right. humour. Humour yes, as well. Definitely. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to make a point that I made at the last show. Right? There was a tweet put out there by CJ Banks and it said, spoiler alert, Travis wins. Yeah. And he will. Absolutely. Have every confidence. Absolutely. He will beat this horrendous disease. And he'll be back. No! To full health no. and hopefully. Because, you know, when it comes to somebody's health, wrestling sometimes pales into insignificance for me. You know, it is, it is Chris gets back to full health first, he gets back in the ring second. You know, and if he can do the first one as the priority, then there's no reason why he can't achieve his dream of be back here. I think despite what Chris Masters says. Absolutely right. Scumbag. Well, I wouldn't agree with that point, of course. But. Big right hand from Masters. I'm sure that's a closed fist. It's not allowed, Des Robinson, referee. Get in there and do something about it. I know the guy's massive, but even so, do your job. Yeah. Oh, Henson is from Martin Kirby. The crowd has been muted because Masters has dominated. Suddenly, Kirby comes alive. Channeling the energy of his friend Chris Travis. Whenever Chris Travis steps in this ring, he always gives it all. Whether he's hitting bulldog headlocks, or sit out pile drivers, or massive super kicks. Trav always puts on a five star show, and Martin Kirby is doing just that right now. Absolutely. Martin Kirby, one of the PCW originals, of course. Oh, come on, get back in, come on. Made his debut a new beginning, 2011. He's the engine room of PCW, is yeah. what he is. Absolutely. The heartbeat. 38 shows, 39 matches. Oh, my goodness me. One heave of that massive thigh, and Kirby was sent flying over the top rope, and he landed hard. You seem surprised by that. He's in there against a powerhouse like Chris Masters. Masters, though, has maybe maybe injured himself in the, in in performing that defensive manoeuvre. Perhaps so. In which case, Kirby needs to capitalise on that because that is his best hope. Kirby's in pain, though. He have landed extremely heavily. Floor is solid wood. As opposed to that hollow wood that you get. And the solid wooden boards underneath that ring canvas as well. Masters is just toying with him at the moment. The Masters has basically had about 90% of this match. Of course he has. Oh! He doesn't want to get cocky because as soon as he does, we know, we know from past experience, Martin Kirby will capitalise on that. He needs to stick to his game plan. And quite frankly, that's going well right now. Oh, that's he right. needs to stay focused though. And Kirby's a massive underdog. You see the darts matches on the telly and they, and they sort of show the bookmakers odds as the match is progressing. Well, if they did that for this match right now, then Kirby would be a rank outsider. I have to say I don't because I'm not common and I don't watch the darts. Hey, darts is the people's sport. I'm sure, I'm sure my butler or something probably watches that. You haven't got it. Housekeeper. Surfboard from Chris Masters, yanking back on the two arms of Martin Kirby while planting his knee firmly into the small of the back. Wearing him down now, and now he's got his arm. And let me tell you, this, this hurts. Well, of course it does, you've got a massive arm like that. 
wrapped around you. That's you can't breathe. You exactly. Cannot, when you are no. in, like, I, I actually have no. been in a sleeper hole. I no. know how it feels. You suck for air. You lose. You just suck. Consciousness. Oh. Your legs turn to rubber. You cannot breathe. Oh. Kirby did extremely well to fight out of that. So high. A kick out of the ensuing cover. He is fighting with every inch of his being. He is fighting for his good friend. He is fighting for Trav. Kicking Chris Masters in the, the shin area. Masters though still has a right leg and it's been perfectly good working order. Yep, as he just kicks the crap out of Kirby on the ground. For the moment, just too big, too powerful, too good. I hate to say it, but that's what's happening right in front of our eyes. And this is not the feel-good conclusion to this charity show, this night for Trav and the PCW fans. No. No. Well, yep. no. Ron Kirby is a good friend of Trav's and they've put him no. into the main event. Who else are you going to put him in there who's worthy on the PCW roster? Yeah. Oh, quite right. It was only right. It was only right. Chris Masters obviously is a main eventer, the former PCW champion. But Kirby is really struggling in there with the sheer mass, the muscle mass. And the, and the thing is, the longer he's in this, the more chance he's got of just giving up. Oh, he's biting, he's biting. He's biting, ref, warn him, warn him. You know don't, don't even tell him off no, for no, that. Do you know what, fair enough, maybe a warning, but I don't blame Kirby for that. He needs to survive in there. Because he is finding this tough. Bleeding good, Chris. You wanna buy me? You wanna buy Tell me? you what though, that has actually rattled Chris Master's me? cage. Who do you think you are, huh? He might lose his cool here, are? yes, there you go. Buying me. And this is where he needs to say focus, I said this earlier. Focus, Masters. He whips Martin Kirby in. Yeah! The wrestler's wrestler from first. North Yorkshire scores with a glancing blow. And suddenly, the tide is turning. Martin Kirby, so many thoughts are racing through his mind as he battles this, this masterpiece, this Adonis. Here comes the curb stop. Oh, and he got the height on it and fell them like a big oak tree. Hooks the leg, Masters is down, but he's not out. Oh. That big pink oak tree just kicked out. Martin Kirby with a manga, Japanese manga style cartoon of himself yeah. and Chris oh. Masters on the rear of his trunks. I think you'll find that's Chris Travis. Oh. Chris Travis, <laughs> quite right. Sorry, there are two Chris's involved. It got confusing for just a second, but it is Chris Travis. You're absolutely right. Don't want to remember. Jim Ross here, you know. <laughs> it, it, we're in a show in his honour. I know we are. Of course I do. Getting into it. Mistakes get made. Because I want Kirby to win in impartiality goes out of the window at a time like this, on a show like this. Masters kicks Kirby off the power again. That was similar to the, the big hoof that sent Kirby propelling to the outside earlier in the match. Kirby has stamina though, he has great conditioning, courage. If he can hang in there and Masters gets tired, he could capitalize and he is doing Tornado DDT. But we have, seen, we have seen how resilient Masters is, though. Oh, look at this. Not said this from Kirby before. He's crossing the leg. Is he going to hook him for a scorpion? Yeah, that yes. 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 yes! Yes! And it's right in the middle of the ring. Chris Masters has got nowhere to go. Scorpion deathlock. Martin Kirby pulling something out that we've never seen before. He's gonna have the power out of this one. He's gonna have to use every ounce of that strength. Well, that's exactly what he's doing. 
rolling towards the bottom rope for Chris Masters. And that's what will force the break. Oh. And he has oh. done. Oh God. Well, that's going to weaken oh that leg, which oh. Kirby's already beaten hurt. on throughout this, this match. Oh. Oh. This gives them that shot and oh. gives them that chance oh. to actually beat the former oh. PCW heavyweight champion. Oh. 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 Kirby is aching. Oh. Oh. He has taken a pounding. Oh. But he's battered oh. but unbowed. As he hauls himself upright and comes charging across. Oh, straight into a backdrop. And the master lock has hooked him. And he's got it in the middle of the ring. And Kirby. He's just wrapped on him in there. Oh, he can't survive this. And he's tapped out. And that is a thoroughly dominant. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match. Masters. Chris. Masters! But he's still got that locked in. He will not let him go. He is making a point here. Oh, it's Trav! It's Trav! I don't believe it! It's Trav with a it. chair! Get oh out! Trav with a chair, a figure, and a super kick! Amazing thing I've ever seen in 12 years of covering British wrestling. A man who is seriously ill, a man who has been fighting cancer, comes running to the aid of his friend. Smashes Chris Masters with a steel chair. And treats us to a little bit of the old trap. With a perfect super kick. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the reason we're all here tonight. Chris Travis! Joining with every single person here in Preston City Wrestling and giving Chris Travis, the shooting star, the standing ovation he thoroughly deserves. Cheers, everyone. You're all right, Gibbs. He just wrestled a match. Oh, fair, fair point, fair point. We love you! We love you, Travis! This guy, I love you too. Thank you, Travis! Thank you, Travis! Oh, thank you, like, I just want to say to everyone who's come out tonight, like, a massive thank you to like each and every one of you who's bought a ticket for tonight. I honestly, I appreciate it so much. I really do. Massive thank you to every single wrestler who's come from around the country to wrestle here for free to entertain everyone. And also to all the PCW crew and to Stephen Flutter. Without him, none of this is possible, honestly. He's the best promoter in the country, I swear. He looks after, he looks after each and every one of the talent in the back. Stephen Flutter, thank you very much. Thank you.
I know it's been, it's been a long night, I won't take up too much of your time. So, um, watching the show, I was up there, if anyone saw me, hello. But I was up there in the corner, um, and watching everyone in the ring and stuff, all the matches, it just, it just makes me want to get back in the ring that much more. Um, I've got, not that I'm counting or anything, but I've got six weeks and two days worth of chemo left. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be the end of my nightmare. That's what we hope. That's what we hope. Massive thank you to everyone. I love you all, and I hope that one day I'll be back in this ring. Give it as much as these guys did tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Safe journey on. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Travis! How much do I love Chris Travis? Uh, Take a look at this. This is how much I love Chris Travis. Freaking just kicked me in the lips. Um, anyways, I'm here for the benefit show for Chris Travis because he's an immac, probably the greatest indie talent I've ever worked. And also, uh, he needs support. I mean, the guy so vain, uh, the hardest part of the cancer process for him is just having to cut his hair and uh, having to be skinny. So uh, that's actually the bigger battle for him in the long run. But uh, in all honesty, uh, I'm here to support him. I think he's going to make a comeback. I'm sure he's going to make a comeback and uh, he's going to fulfill his destiny and uh, cement a legacy in professional wrestling because he's that damn good and I believe in him. I love you, Travis. <laughs>